What's up? I am David Long, and I'm here to talk to you today about my own personal development and the music that I've liked as I've grown up and matured, and the music that I've made as well. We've been together for such a long time. Now music, music. My first memories of music are actually records. I know I'm dating myself here, but I had some awesome Jackson 5 records. And when I was really, really young, about, you know, five, four or five, something like this, I remember I found him to be incredibly inspiring because he was young like me and he was killing it. I was like, whoa, and I found it super inspiring, and I just got way into Michael Jackson. And he probably lays the foundation for every other thing that I like and that I'm into or that I do, I think. I can find some relation to Michael Jackson in it. Did the dances and whatnot. I got really into Motown. Of course, before this, you know, I, I listened to my parents' music with them and sang some of those songs. At the time, my dad was into Huey Lewis and the News, and one of the first songs I learned the words to was Heart of Rock and Roll. Which is actually a pretty wordy song with lots of city names in it and stuff like that. I think I um, was pretty good at hearing lyrics and memorizing lots of words at a very young age. Now, my mom would probably tell you that the first song that I learned to sing was Barbara Ann by the Beach Boys. But I'm not sure if going ba 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 really counts as singing a song or memorizing it. But you know, there was also lots of uh, oldies and whatnot around. So to me, so far, this is all tribal. This is just like music of my culture that happens to be around my parents' music and whatnot. I think it's important here to say that I'm talking about my perception. I'm not saying that all of this music is tribal, I'm just saying that in my lifetime, in my experience, I experienced it in a tribal kind of way. You know, even Michael Jackson, those those uh, records and stuff were things that they gave me that, that, I, that they thought that I might like. I also had like nursery rhyme net records and stuff like that. But um, the first record that I got for myself, it was actually a tape. And I had to sneak it because it had bad words and really actually pretty foul content. But it kind of goes along with a, uh, a red, impulsive, egoic stage. I would say that I almost had to steal it. I didn't steal it, I paid for it. It was explicit, so I had to get somebody to sell it to me who wasn't gonna question my age. So I bought Murder Was The Case soundtrack Snoop Doggy Dog. And let me tell you, it was formative. The content was pretty foul and horrible, but it was, there was so much like smooth beats and like nice delivery. Oh my goodness. I'll say also that there was something cool about the off limits aspects of it. The fact that I wasn't allowed to have it, that I had to hide it, that I kept it secret. Um, 
all of that I think is very red, impulsive, egoic. You know, for me it was kind of, in a way, breaking the rules. Dear God, I wonder, can you save me? I can't die, my boo-boo's about to have my baby. I think it's too late for praying. Hold up, her voice spoke to me and it slowly started saying, Bring your life down to me, you make it better. And how long will I live? But also, you know, certain themes in this album, and especially in this main song, are dealing with like Faustian bargains, and even Snoop Dogg seems to be a red, impulsive, egoic who is aware of, you know, some kind of a blue traditional conception of God and trying to redeem himself. So, so in the same kind of struggles that he's talking about on this album are some of the th same things that I'm struggling with in listening to the album. Feelings of guilt and remorse and whatnot. So it's kind of interesting how um, they parallel each other even though, you know, I'm not actually killing anybody or anything like that. So it doesn't quite compare. And of course later, I did start getting more into the church and we listened to lots of worship music, and I could relate to a lot of, of what was going on with that. I also found a bunch of Christian alternatives, Christian hip hop, like a DC Talk. Like a mother to her child, I'm kicking it Jesus style. To the ones that think they heard, I did use the J word, cause I ain't too soft to say it, even if DJs don't play it. Or even the gospel gangsters. Was Christ for life. He put me on with his life and says we bang and I got to get my stripes. Lay in the cut with my Bible and put my gut. And when I jump up, then all the fallen angels stuck. I'm back to the Tough sounding stuff about how my Bible's my gun. And God, we look to you tonight. Above the singing, God, above the music, above the songs. Let your name be lifted high, Jesus. Let your name be honored, God. And we commit all that we are to you, God, and everything that we do. And we reach towards you, Jesus. Amen. At a certain point, I did get really into church and what was going on there. And there's really something powerful about singing in a group with other people and making yourself vulnerable. And all these worship songs are all about opening yourself up and asking God to give you more and to and to um, to fill you and you make yourself vulnerable it's a very interesting thing and it's very different than what a lot of the rap archetypes I was used to were trying to do was to not be vulnerable um, I think this is one of the differences between urban and country music you got the slang versus the twang. Both tend to be kind of lyric based about things that they think are cool, like. I'm rolling in my six foot. <laughs> or. Big black jacked up truck. That's my truck. I'm talking about trucks. They're both, they're both about what the people think are cool. Not only is, is urban music more uh, rhythm based and driven, but the masculine archetypes are also cool. <laughs> Whereas the country music is more flowy and windy and airy, there might not even be any percussion, whereas percussion is like the base of the root of urban music. And melody is the root of the foundation of country or folk music. And the masculine figures are all vulnerable. They're, they're singing about love and loss and all this kind of stuff. Of course, there are notable exceptions on each side. This is just a stereotype and a generalization. That's because country music is more traditional and urban music is usually more egoic or modern. But generally, if you listen to the things that uh, rap dudes say about their women, it's like, I could never be vulnerable, I could never fall in love with you. If you listen to the things that country dudes say about their women, it's like, oh my god, please don't leave me. 
So for me, Christianity was definitely a place of an opening of the heart and making myself vulnerable and singing together with other people and this kind of singing from this first person perspective as a group of like asking God to open us and uh, to make us better vehicles for what he wants to do in time. Something about that still sticks with me. After a while I joined the worship team and I started to help play some of this music and I actually started to figure out how formulaic it was, not just in terms of the music, but in terms of psychological manipulation. The way that emotions and suggestion is used to be able to manipulate people into particular states where they're then willing to make a life change. It can be good, but I also saw that there were certain people who would come up week after week and it was almost like they were addicted to it, like a drug. And there was no um, development happening beyond this. It was always just, oh, I'm a sinner, forgive me, I'm a sinner, forgive me, I'm a sinner, forgive me. And no one was really taking responsibility for their own growth and development. And I definitely, after a while, found this frustrating because I wasn't a person who got saved as much as it was that I grew up around it. And so I didn't need it to support my life change. I just saw it as the truth until I actually studied it and then learned that it wasn't. When I was in high school, I was actually starting to get kind of tired of mainstream rap, which was basically the only rap I knew about, and the redundancy of the same themes over and over and over again. Money, clothes, cars, you know, all these things. Like for me at that time, I was more interested in relationships and girls and stuff like that. This is when I started to listen to more rock music, more punk rock and ska and indie. It started with a band called Sublime. And Sublime was really good for me because they were kind of a hybrid band themselves. Sublime had kind of a hip hop style, but the themes weren't those same boring themes. They were more about relationships and things that I could relate to. And I think around this time is when I started to listen to lots of things that were kind of rap rock combinations like Rage Against the Machine and Corn and Lift Biscuit and you know other other things like that that were starting to blend the lines. It's just one of those days where you don't wanna wake up. Everything is oh, everybody sucks. It's all about the he says, she says, Yeah, it's some really angsty music. That's what you listen to when you're in high school. I know it's embarrassing to admit it, but I felt rage. I felt passion. I was filled with hormones and emotions. I probably started to listen to more cryy, screamy kind of music like... It's <laughs> probably what it feels like to be a teenager. This was around the time that I actually started my first band. I was really inspired because lots of my other friends had bands or were in bands and I would go to local shows and stuff like that. And I could play the guitar, you know, like I said, I, I played guitar in church and stuff like that. So I had friends who were into punk rock and we kind of started um, an indie band, sort of a Jimmy Eat World sort of style. Kind of band. When I close my eyes, sometimes I Lots of songs about face. love and girls and, but now and emotions and again, all that kind of stuff. Without a trace. I don't have any music, unfortunately, of my band. When they hit the floor, I, I do have an acoustic version of a song that I wrote for my sister, and I have a few pictures, but that's about it. Her. My sister, she cries herself to sleep at night alone. No home, no one to call her own. My sister, my sister, the alone.
we had lots of cool little musical parts, but they were all really written. Like at this time, we would practice and play everything exact, and then we would, you know, perform and do it exact. Like there was no improv improvisation. It was very structured. And that's good for me, because I was learning the rules, I was learning some of the theory and stuff like that, and, you know, it's pretty interesting. I was in that band for a couple years, and that was pretty great, and then I started doing this acoustic project that you're hearing now. I did that for a couple years, but it was kind of Christian, and then when I lost my Christianity, that project pretty much died along with it. Math rock definitely correlates to this stage of development. A lot of the bands that I started to like around this stage, the Coheed and Cambria, lots of progressive bands doing lots of really tight and, and awesome syncopations and things where they will go into these different part changes and they'll really surprise you. And that's what's kind of cool in a lot of this modern music is the way that they can mess with structure to take you off guard. So it was around this time in my life that I had somewhat of an existential awakening. It had a major effect on my psyche and thus my music. It was at this time when I started doing psychedelics and playing music on psychedelics and jamming more with friends and I remember one time I was playing guitar and my hand was just going and I was watching it. I realized, you know, the power of meditation could be applied to music and I got really interested in jamming as a type of spiritual practice and I had a couple improvisational bands and whatnot. Here's a, a, a short clip of freestyle improv jam that happened around this time. It turns out if you get highly skilled musicians in a room together and they just play, you can come up with some pretty amazing stuff. All that's off the top of the head. I noticed at a certain point that they were signaling to each other how many hits they were going to do and I slightly picked up on it, but I was mostly just riding on top of it. I had this really great group of musicians and we would meet at my house almost every week 
and just get as many good musicians as we could and I would record the session. I have a bunch of really good videos, much like this. I think after I didn't have very much to show from my last bands, I got a lot better about making sure that I kept track. If you want to watch more of those freestyle jams, you can click here, or you can also download the best of Good Mean Scholars from my Bandcamp page here. It's the oldest project that I have that's still available. So it's around this time that one of my artist and jamming buddies introduces me to Saul Williams. And this is probably the first time I heard hip hop that was not just conscious, but enlightened. We are determined to be the channels of these changing frequencies into songs, painting, writing, dance, drama, love, and love. We enlist every instrument, acoustic, electronic, every person as beings of sound to acknowledge their responsibility to uplift the consciousness of the entire fucking world. I was like, whoa, this is powerful. And it really reawoken my passion for hip hop. And I started learning about KRS One and how he sees hip hop as a type of spiritual tradition or a mystery school or something like that. It's kind of a very pagan approach. Hip means to know. It's a form of intelligence. To be hip is to be update and relevant. Hop is a form of movement. You can't just observe a hop. You gotta hop up and do it. Hip and hop is more than music. Hip is the knowledge. Hop is the movement. Hip and hop is intelligent movement or relevant movement. We selling the music so write this down on your black books and journals. Hip hop culture is eternal. You manifest worlds with your words, so be careful what you say because you can bring that into reality. I come back because I'm not in the physical. I create myself, man. I live in the spiritual. Her infinite power helping oppress people. We are unique and unequal. Hip hop. Holy integrated people have an omnipresent power. The watchmen's in the tower of hip hop. And so there's this idea of taking responsibility as an MC for what you say. And that really appealed to me. I thought that was beautiful. Songs become like spells. And it really reminded me of my experiences in the church and stuff. And I was like, man, if Christians can use music like this to empower people to have life-changing experiences, we as enlightened people can use this music to give people existential awakenings. So that's the birth of my I Am, I am. project. It was originally based on this picture that I made about the moment of realization where you realize unity. It was this picture like this, and I'm holding up the words I am. And I, I made one, and I made all my friends make one as well, so it wasn't like I myself was claiming to be it or something. The original idea, though, in making the music was to speak from that perspective and to in the same way that Christian worship music was about um, appealing to a second person deity my music was about realizing God in first person so they were more like anthems for a person to step into and to be like yes this song empowers me to be able to go do the shit that I need to do in the same way that hopefully, you know, the Christian music empowered those people to be able to continue to live the life that they chose to live when they had their moment of rebirth. There's an existential rebirth and this I amness, this moving from this perspective of unity is what I'm pointing at. 
and what a lot of these anthems are about are they're like tiny mantras or reminders to be able to put yourself in that perspective in like a fun, cool, uh, contemporary kind of way. Like in the same way where, you know, you would want to put on a good song and it like makes you feel good and it, and it like amps you up. This is a song that you could put on that actually you agree with, hopefully, and more than just it, you agree with it actually uplifts you in a more powerful way than a song about get money or whatever just doesn't do for you. No matter how cool it sounds. I sort of started slow and incorporated more hip hop into my first solo album. At first my perspective definitely was very green. You know, I was into practicing the power of now and a lot of um, things that I'm glad that I learned, but a lot of other people might use for spiritual bypassing. You know, um, my, the name of my album is called Follow Me Out. So I see that as kind of deconstructionist, you know. I mean, and to an extent that might be, that might be necessary, but it's basically an expression of being fed up with modernity or the world as it is and wanting off like one of the lines is deal me out so it's basically stop the ride I want off which is the message of a lot of green cultural deconstruction and a lot of um, Buddhist ideas that are in a sense coping mechanisms that can also be ways of not dealing with issues when they're in front of you. Escapism in spiritual robes. And I'll be damned if that isn't the theme of the album cover. But this is also the time when I birthed what for me was a whole new kind of writing and recording process. So before with that acoustic album, I actually went to a recording studio. And that's about a dollar a minute. You sit there and you try to play it perfectly straight through, and if you have to, you punch it. And it was an acoustic album, so it was very raw, and we kind of went very perfectionist at it to make sure that it was very tight and very right. Whereas now I'm freestyling my album into existence by jamming on tracks and writing as I go, but having a very free flow process. And also recording myself. Not only is it awesome to have the technology to do that now, but also it eliminates the middleman where I don't have to rely on somebody else to do it right. And it opens up a whole new realm of creativity for me to be able to express myself directly. I just want to say also that another one of my favorite bands that I grew to love at this stage of development through listening to their music on um, psychedelics. I kind of feel like myself and the people in the Mars Volta kind of made similar transitions at the same time. Like they went from At The Drive-In, a very kind of like indie punk rock kind of band similar to what I was in, to a much more um, psychedelic, existential, super trippy. You can definitely feel the psychedelic influence in their music because they use their music and certain effects and things like that to bend time in a way that really messes with your senses. From a more progressive, very like kind of like tight to like having that but also extending the length of their songs into almost these like kind of jazz songs and having like long imp improvisational breaks and stuff like that where it would go from like da -da 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 -da, and then like into some kind of like smooth latino jazz thing that builds and builds and builds and then da -da -da -da, and then you're right back into the to some kind of an indie rock kind of thing again and they started incorporating all kinds of horns which I'm, I love horns, you know, 70s music and 
and Motown, that's like, you know, that's my roots as, as we've already established. So, um, to me, they're, they're probably my favorite band, even still. And I also feel like when I see the lead singer of Mars Volta on stage, it reminds me of Michael Jackson. He's doing the same kind of like James Brown, like foot moves and stuff like that. And like doing this really high pitched um, singing thing. I think one of the things that makes Michael Jackson so appealing is his ability to fluctuate back and forth between masculine and feminine tones. Like this like, ooh, and like, ooh, you know, like, so you got these like two extremes and he kind of like continuously fluxes back and forth between like the strong and the vulnerable, which I, which I have already kind of brought up as this sort of underlying theme that I think correlates to the agentic and communal themes of development as we move through this flux. And I think a lot of, a lot of what we're doing is starting to develop some kind of a balance in ourselves, And that's why I think uh, Michael Jackson is so appealing in that way is because he has this ability to simultaneously have strength and vulnerability and that's beautiful michael jackson's very androgynous and that's not necessarily what i'm saying that we should be like what i'm saying is is that we should feel comfortable and healthy expressing strength and vulnerability these masculine and feminine features are aspects of all of us and we all need to find some kind of healthy balance between these roles. And music is definitely one of the ways that I personally have felt into these different archetypes and these different roles and these different extremes and found ways to resonate with both of them. So, speaking of synthesis, finally, when I came out with the album the outer regions of inner space, I was really trying to represent what an integral awakening was like, and I was explicitly talking about non-dual ideas and kind of laying out my basic philosophy of what I thought it meant to be integrally aware. So you have these themes of these universal ideas that appear through different cultural traditions, different religious symbols. And I'm painting in the very Joseph Campbell style with a broad brush about universal themes and talking about unity and duality and divisions of four, and spiral dynamics, non-dual perspective, moving from the middle, both acting and non-acting, being involved, freedom and responsibility, trying to really take on this paradox. I'm moving people up the spiral dynamically, applying this integral philosophy, logic and theosophy, cartography of human possibility, flexibility of the body and mind, as a useful tool for our endless in time. Yeah, I'm the divine, if you seek then you'll find. I am the living truth behind your symbols and signs. I am every life in every lifetime. I am infinite, eternal, go ahead and rewind. So The Outer Regions of Inner Space is named after a book by Joseph Campbell, The Inner Reaches of Outer Space. But musically, that album is my first strong hip-hop album. It's mostly rap and only a little bit of singing and choruses and stuff like that. I'm starting to blur the lines a little bit, but it's mostly a rap album, I feel like. So then my next album after that, it's called Spiral Dynamics, and it is about what's next, you know? And it's kind of also trying to break some of the, the green taboos about what, it, what spiritual music is supposed to be like. And now I'm also bringing other voices online. There's a, there's a part of me that really deeply cares about everything, and that's painful and upsetting. And I want to talk about that as what it is to be an enlightened person as a part of the experience and feeling alone 
and the search for Sangha and other people who have the same kind of views as you and how we can come together and not just do it as like I'm the one like the savior but like how can we find community how can we deal with being this awake person in a world that's so asleep I think that the way that we achieve that is through finding some kind of higher purpose and in communion. We are gathered here today in embrace and sacred union, offering at one mint when you enter this communion. Holy brethren, welcome to the Sangha. Let us gather in a circle. Mother Mary, Harry Kushner, this time Agni's burning purple. Now pass that sacrament to me. Yes, I'm the Holy Trinity, body, mind, and spirit, the Buddha Sangha Dharma. Tell me, can you feel it? Then practice yoga with your karma. Can you let down your defenses? Can you take off all that armor? Namaste. The time has come for us to seize the day. Yes, it's God's play, but what skills are you uniquely bringing to the table? Are you able to speak in and see through fables? Can you create and transcend labels? Can you enable the unstable? Now tell me, can you measure depth and span? And do you really give a damn when you wake up to give a hand? Just because you can. From what perspective are you moving? What direction are you going? What ends and goals are you pursuing? And what... Spiral Dynamics is an album with some collaborations on it. Some of the songs that aren't collaborations are more singing and blues with guitar, and I, I was really wanting to, to go back to some of those kind of feels. But also when I collaborated, I did wind up doing some rap and some hip hop, and there's some cool collaborations and stuff on there. So the next inevitable move is the Universe Project, which is all about embracing life and being here, which is in a sense coming full circle or, or the total opposite kind of perspective of the follow me out. This is the let's come back and kick some ass. So this is a very empowered perspective. It's that life is art, life is creative and I'm at the cutting edge of creativity and the evolution. I can be the hands and feet of God in the world. And there's this bodhisattva vow that says, you know, I'm dedicated to life, to being here, to saying yes to reality even though it hurts. And this is the beginning of a much more materialistic, pagan, integral theme and it goes hard against the perspective that I presented in my first album, which is basically escapism. And it challenges these up and coming integralists to take up life and take up reality, not just to try to be escapist like I was. Do we all have these deep-seated feelings of inadequacy? Fear of both success and failure? A tension between your inner humanity and your inner savior? I've experienced divinity, serenity, but I still can't kill the enemy. Are you kidding me? I only wanted to get rid of me for infinity and just be I am. But I keep on coming back around the hermeneutic circle like, hey, remember me? And I'm just like, well, yes, goddamn. Yeah, yeah, it's for me. There is no me or you with so many people like stop the ride right here man i need to get off i need to go to my happy place with things to say form and soft but in that moment you're not free you're just running from creation and the pain that comes with manifestation uh -huh. i can understand that type of pain that type of loss that type of gain i can understand that type of shame but i'm learning to be patient i'm learning to be patient Without struggle, there's no growth. Without risk, there's no adventure. I'm transcending and including, and I'm moving from my center. Every winter, you might just catch me freezing up. But I'll cut through the ice with my flaming sword and then pour it with my cup. With all my albums, I try to keep you on your toes and surprise you. But with the Universe Project, I'm trying to feel like I can go anywhere and do anything and it's going to fit into my style because I'm doing it. So I'm kind of trying to work on that, trying to integrate in more feelings and jump around more and feel like I can really go anywhere. Right now I'm working on the Universe Project Part 2, which is due to come out May 28th. 
I'm really excited for it. It is very hip hop. I want it to feel very classic, like the kind of album that you could bump in your car. It's also going to continue to expand upon the same themes that we see in the Universe Project Part 1. Looking at what a more Marxist or materialistic integral theory and application might look like. Bequeathed into the scene, debriefed and in between the sheets. So what I've seen, and what I've 17 seen. or 58, the time is what you make. The real or for the fake. For the fake. Inflate, but don't be raid. Hesitate and you'll be late. You think your shit is great, but uh, it's not great. Resolute rectify, I'm the inspector in this every moment in every endeavor. I witness it will. The specter hangs over the hill with the cross. The corporate boss, respect me, don't tell me to chill. Homie, you know me, I'm ill. I'ma be getting my fill. That's just the deal. Still, seeing the world as the will to power. Watch you devour whatever you plow. But till a billion, a million is nil. Robbing you, raping you, kill. You never go hungry, but some be just desperate for a meal. Can anyone else out the field? Are we just cowards? Only concerned with the power that we call our Still, still, and we're always just thinking, what can little old me even do about it? There's a reason to speak, we can find a free seat, realign and release, we reorient peace, and communities leap into unity's peak, at least I've drawn your attention to deep dimensions less bleak, that's one of my many techniques to tweak. Your mind are refined, I'm leaving behind ideas that are weak I am authentic and unique There you have it. That about brings you up to date. If you feel compelled, if you're interested, you can listen and download my music for free at iamdavidlong.bandcamp.com I have it set to name your own price, but feel free to put zero dollars. If you want to give money, please feel free to do it, but I really just want people to hear the music and enjoy it. I hope you enjoy talking about music and development. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up. Peace.